Alright guys, <laughs> got a new conga bag, so I'm going to start setting it all up. I'll give you a run through of what I actually use, because I get that question quite a lot. Is, uh, what do I take with me on my conga trips and stuff? So I'm going to go through the whole lot today and set up my new bag. It's a Tronics Pro one with all the pockets. Really nice bag, really spacious as well. But first of all, I'm going to go get a cigarette. Brand new big net as well. Do -do -do. Uh, you never fish for cod. No, we can't target cod over here. We get them now and again. All right, Earl, mate. Uh, yeah, I'm going through my conga bag now. I've had this one for probably 10 years, maybe more. You see, it's got. It's stitched up with cable ties and line and all that. And I got a new one for Christmas, so might as well sort the bag out. And I'll show you all the stuff that I take with me as well. After the conga wongas. <laughs> right. Got a brand new rod. And that's the new one out, I think. The Pen Fathom 25N, or NSD, should I say? Not a bad reel. Right, I just need to make some room. What camera do I use and what editing app? I use uh, Adobe Final Cut and iMovie and I use GoPro Hero 8. Do -do -do -do. Right, what was that? Am I going fishing this year? Yeah, I am. I'll be doing a lot of fishing and foraging. It's eight, what's that? 819 in calendar, uh, Canada. Uh, I will come to Canada one day. Uh, I'd rather not, I'd rather you not spend your money, mate. Thanks for the offer though. Who was that? 
uh, SK Fishing, Canada. I've never fished in Ireland. What filter do I use? The Slims. Uh, you do not need a license to forage in Guernsey. Hi, Danny. What time is it now? It's about 2.20, I think. Am I going spear fishing this year? Yes. Uh, it was only the other day. Hold on. Put this thing on so tight. It was only the other day that me and Sam were sorting all the robbers out. New spear. I see old Bay of Shat spear gun. Works fine, double rubber. I actually need to look up the laws on that to see what we can shoot. Make it another edit. <laughs> that was legendary. No, I've never been to Shetland. Love the meme edit. That was Danny, I think, who did that. That was legendary. She sent it to me on uh, on Instagram. I was cracking up, so I had to put it on the uh, on the channel. It's a laugh, eh? Oh, nice, Brian. I'm sure it'll come in handy. Portsmouth Angler, you right, Jake? I'm good, mate. Waiting for the wind to drop. That's why I'm in the shed so much at the moment. It's doing my head in. Uh, collabs in Cornwall. Uh, eventually, I might come to Cornwall, but I've got other places planned first. Big, I get that question quite a lot. What's the biggest conger you ever caught? It's just under 40 pound off the shore. What type of metal is best to make a foraging hook? Uh, a spear. Uh, that one, that's an old cheap spear. And as you can see, it rusts. If you get, uh, where is it? I don't know where my other one is, but if you get a uh, stainless steel spear, they're about 20 quid and make one out of that. That's uh, that's going to be sick. And they last for years as well. Just make a handle out of softwood. I find it doesn't crack like the hardwood does. Oh, nice one, Jake. Hopefully you get something. Right, I'm going to start sorting my bag out. The problem with the lies, I get so engrossed in chatting to everyone that I don't get anything done. <laughs> Right, I wonder if you can see this. Oh, that's another tripod broken. Lovely job, Jay. <laughs> all right. Hope you can see that, all right? First thing I take with me is a fillet and knife. I've broken two this year, I think. Uh, sorry, last year. New Year's gone now. So, got a knife. I'll take the bag off so you can see everything. So, I always take a fillet of knife. My disgorger. That's just a piece of 6mm or 8mm rebar. Just with a screwdriver handle on. And I've, uh, I've done the end. So, there's a groove for popping the hooks out. That always comes with me. That's really handy, that. Uh, what's next? Cable ties. Because we're always bringing cameras everywhere for the underwater footage, I like to bring a lot of these. Because mounting cameras to crab pots and wheels and stuff is bloody hard to do. Especially when we're throwing them. Can I send you a building knife that I'm... Um, I can't see the end of that comment, but... Uh, I'm setting up a P.O. box. Yeah, I'll be setting up a P.O. box, so if anyone wants to send anything, then happy days. Uh, I don't want anyone to send any money or anything, though. I've, I've, I've had a lot of people saying, oh, I'd love to send you money and stuff, but I'm not interested in that. 
So if you've got a knife or tackle or something like that, I'll be happy to for you to send that. Just don't don't anyone send me money. <laughs> right, fishing bag. Pair of scissors. Gotta have those. Even though I probably haven't used those in four years. This is something I don't show much. Is these. These are really good when you've got really thick rods. Sounds dodgy, but it's true. Like these, the uh, Daiwa, the Daiwa Windcast. They're very thick, and uh, the big, the big glow lights. They split when you put them on. So what I buy now is the little star lights, and then you just buy these attachments that go on the rod tip, and then you can take them off as you want. That's a really handy piece of kit to have. That, and these are cheap as chips, and you can buy probably a hundred off Amazon for five quid. So it's easy. So that's something that always comes with me. I've broke my tripod, so I've got to use the. I've got to bend the stand round now. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's the cheap Amazon brand. Uh, if you get the green or the blue ones, are the best. The red are crap, but the starlights are the best. And you can see that's the smaller diameter ones, and they all fit the same lights as well. So bloody handy those. We got in here. That's just weights. Pair of scales, digi scales, and I always bring wherever they are if they're in here. Some of these bad boys, these have been beaten up, they barely open, but. For congers, because congers are renowned for swallowing hooks and big baits as well, especially when they get upwards of sort of 12 pound, they can swallow a whole mackerel piece of piss. So having pliers and disgorges and that is ideal. What other goodies have I got in here? Every fisherman's friend, the bait elastic. Won't talk too much on that. I think every fisherman knows about bait elastic. Uh, some really small, clip swivels and that's for if I can get one uh, when you got your conga trace uh, we use breakaway links sort of a piece of line with a, uh, a knot in it so it'll break away uh, bringing a packet of these with you so as soon as you lose your weight you can tie one back on and you're back rolling again because we'd rather you lose the weight than the whole rig you know and then some 12 pound line that I use for the breakaway. You can use anything below what your main line is. If you're using, like I use 30 pound main line. So I wouldn't use anything stronger than 20 pound for the breakaway. And that way you land a lot more fish like that. Cause a lot of the time it is the lead that catches in the rocks. And then this bad boy, my rig wallet. Which, as you can see, I carry a ton of rigs with me. This is up and overs. Uh, my conga rigs. I got poly panels and flapper rigs in here as well for gilt head fishing. And that's pretty much all I bring. I put, oh, I got a couple of flatty traces in there just in case we get a few worms or something. They've got size ones on them, worm hooks, a few sequins. But I don't really use those often, really, because I like big baits, big fish. So I don't really need a lot of tackle. As for a tackle box, I only bring, uh, I'll have to go up in my room and get it. One sec. That's all my tackle boxes.
yeah that is all i bring for a tackle box and that's just a little box of everything because i've got so many rigs a lot of the time you only need to change a hook or a little clip or something like that or if you see like a bass swimming around and you get a live bait quickly stick a four row hook on and live bait but you don't need a big tackle box and we like to uh we like to carry light all right read some comments Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Harrison Hill, I hate this channel. Me too, mate. Go suck a dick. Uh, do, 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 do. I have that tackle box. Caveman says, yo. Uh, how's everybody in this chat, though? We all good? Smash fam. I like the videos. My favourite for YouTube. Samantha! How's it going? Did you get the glow tape? I got some glow tape. Nice. Well, I'll just put the camera up for a second, guys. I will be sorting my bag out. I broke the tripod again. You're absolutely useless. Look at it, look. You're useless. <laughs> you really are. Yeah, nice. there's two strips, that's all they had. Is it? Yeah. But also... Glow tape for the new rod. I grabbed the light because I wanted to see if it would fit. These are slightly bigger. They don't look very big. Though. They're supposed to be big. 3XL. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, I was wondering if they actually fit. I don't know, they usually split. Oh, would well, you look at that? No, when the tape's on, eh? What do you mean tape? You don't need tape. Tape? Oh, right, okay. That's what I'm talking about. With that, plus the resin, it cracks them. Mm. That's why I was explaining before about the uh, clip-on ones. Mm -hmm. That's the, that's the reason I don't use them anymore, man. It's shit. Well, to be fair, though, the Viz tape's more than enough. Oh, yeah. You can see it. It locks better. That Viz tape I've had on these rods for years. And what I did is uh, epoxied them on. And that lasts for serious time as well. It's a good way of doing your rods. Because if you forget your glow tips, you can just shine your light on them and they glow up like high heaven. Smash fam. Sam the man is in the shed. Sam the man. <laughs> Don't leave your batteries on the floor. I know, they keep rolling off. That's a question I get quite a lot, is what head torches do you use? Uh, these are just 30 quid ones from a building shop. The lighthouse, but they're bloody bright. And the camera, it doesn't go joddery when you're filming with these. That's why I use them. Look at the state of your shed again. Huh? Look at the state of your shed. Shut up, little Miss Wife. <laughs> Do some more fishing in the lighthouse. Uh, I might be going back to the lighthouse. We, we fish there now and again when we can't get to the other spots. Right, set up the fishing bag. Uh, this is something I always bring as well. It's a first aid kit that I've made up myself though. Uh, the standard ones are rubbish. But I like to have things for deep cuts and stuff as well. So that's always important. Finger wraps. So I'm always nearly chopping my fingers off. So And Sam. <laughs> so it's handy to have a piece of kit like that. And it doesn't weigh too much. It's a bit bulky but it is what it is. Uh, the weather's crap, Marcia. That's why we're stuck in the shed again. Right, that goes in there. That goes in there. Setting up the new deck. Uh, it's where to put everything in the new ones, eh? Mm. So you're going to get down the fishing spot and not know where everything is. Yeah, but then you've got the trouble of putting everything out to get to one thing that you've actually put at the bottom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, I prefer Guernsey butter. <laughs> what was that? Always wanted to know. If... 
Always wanted to know if Sam gets a portion of the YouTube revenue. Uh, he's a big part of Smash Fishing Experience. That's between me and him. <laughs> Uh, if your line's been in the shade for a while uh, and not in sunlight or anything, it does last. But if you're going to leave it for years on end, then I'd always recommend changing it before your next outing. Uh, we change ours quite often because we conga fish a lot. So our line gets frayed or pulled too tight, you know. So we go through quite a lot of line. What do Ormas taste like? They've got their own sort of... Uh, taste to be honest it's hard to it's, what would you say they taste like i don't think you compare it to anything no nah, they're quite they're quite unique they're in the taste tender as well yeah a bit like cottlefish yeah yeah very similar to that actually uh we're all good jake do 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 no, me and Sam haven't fished in Leeds before. Are you going to do the, uh, the tape today then? Maybe, yeah. Depends what time I've got. It's where to put everything. It's quite a big bag, eh? It's massive, man. Look at the, look at the room in there. Nice. Be good for the Herm trip. Yeah, definitely. Just gonna have to lay everything in there. Torches always goes at the top. Yeah, two of those torches with a spare pair of batteries last all night fishing. They're quite good lights for what they cost. All right, pliers. And as you can see, we carry really light. We don't like carrying a ton of stuff. Just makes our life 10 times harder. Especially down the cliffs and that, eh, mate? Yeah. <laughs> do, 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 do. Good old cable ties. Fix anything with cable ties. And duct tape. <laughs> and duct tape. <laughs> and a bit of electrical tape to finish it off. <laughs> Should be enough for now. Good old cable ties. Scissors. Bung all my lights in there, that'll do. Sorry I'm not chatting much, guys. I want this so I can get to things easily. I don't like to muck about when I'm fishing. Just like to get there, get the rods out. And that's it. I'm not a big tackle tart, so I'm more just get there and fish until you catch something. <laughs> I'll bring you back up now. That's pretty much what I bring in my conga bag. As you can see, it's not a lot. Uh, but the camera equipment is quite bulky as well. So, uh, what's that? Do you cook congas? I have done in the past. I don't I don't usually keep them because uh, we don't have a lot of congas left over here. They are coming back, but the French wiped them out well, quite a while back now. And they're still, still trying to uh, get the populations up. So we just don't take them because of that. You and Inglorious are such comics. Yeah, it went batshit crazy, that's why. How do you cook your cuttlefish? There's a lot of ways to cook them. You can uh, put them under the grill. You can bake them. You can fry them. You can you can do a lot with it. Uh, the only thing with cuttlefish is don't cook it for very long. Do, 
Yeah, it's horrible what's going on in Australia and that at the moment. What is the fish that you hate to eat? Ras. Ras is disgusting. It's mushy. Where in Where is the best place in Guernsey for the biggest fish? Big fish can come from anywhere. Can come from a beach. I've caught 22 pound congas straight off the off the beach before, so uh yeah, they can be anywhere, but the biggest fish we get inshore here is congas, so anywhere snaggy. No, I haven't checked the crab pot yet. Uh, that's probably going to be in pieces, to be honest. Uh, I'm a bit hesitant to go see it. <laughs> Happy New Year from Japan. We eat almas raw. I'm not a fan of them raw, but here's what it is. Watching from Herm. <laughs> we plan to come back to Herm to do some fishing. We had some great hoss fishing over there. Ah, there we go. That's the other pair of scales I use. These are, are not as accurate as the Digi. So if I got a, a fish that I think is going to be a PB, I'll weigh it on these and then I'll weigh it on the Digis after to get a decent, decent weight on it, you know? Cable toys. What's that? <laughs> There's a story behind this, why it's in my fishing bag. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember, I had a blue, I've forgotten what it was called now, I had a blue 13 foot beach caster that I went conga fishing with. And uh, we were casting off Havlet Slip and I cast it full pelt, like sort of half pendulum. And I blasted it and the top of the rod came off and the line jammed. So the whole lot just pinged. So I lost the end of my rod. So I took all the pieces off it and binned the bottom bit. <laughs> I've still got the... Uh, the slide attachment for the reel as well. So if one breaks, I've still got a spare. That was a waste of 100 quid rod. Don't the digi scales corrode at all? Yeah, uh, I think they all do. They all got a bit of stainless in them, but they always seem to have rust on them after a few weeks. Uh, best bet's just to stick them in a carrier bag. Uh, all good, Earl. I think I shouted you out in the last live. I made a list of uh, channels I was going to shout out and I've completely lost it. So <laughs> I was trying to remember them. I love sushi. I'll be trying a bit of sushi. Looks like a golf bag, Jay. Yeah, it does, mate. But it's got nice big padding on it for when I'm carrying it around. So I'm happy. We'll see how long it lasts. What is my opinion on the Australian bushfires? It's sad. It's just a sad case, that. Uh, uh, I don't really want to talk much on it because a lot of people have been affected by it, to be honest. Yeah, my heart goes out to them. Yeah, we're, uh, first one with tides is next weekend, isn't it? I'll be doing the Friday, Saturday and the Sunday. Uh, whether we find something on the first day, I don't know because... Uh, I think it's a two metre tide. So we'll, we'll just have to see what we can find. Mac fishing, love to fish with you and Sam one day. Maybe one day, mate. Yeah, the Ormer and Tides are all in the tide books for Guernsey. There's specific dates that you can go on. If you go on outside of those dates, then you'll get hammered. <laughs> How's Mrs. Smash? She's good. When you lot fishing again, when the when the wind dies. That's for sure. Right, that's done.
my new beast. Can't wait to try this out. Uh, this is the newer model that I've got here. But that reel's a, that's a diamond. The power it's got, just from a few reels, you know. Perfect for congas where we are. Because the congas are right under our feet in the holes, we've literally got to pull them out of the holes. Uh, that's why, you see, when we hook into one, we've got to pull it as hard as we can. Otherwise, we'll lose them. Strong winds. <laughs> you should pick 20 random people to go fishing with me. Uh, in the summer, I plan to take subscribers out with me. Uh, not so much winter, because it's hard to make videos in the winter as it is, and to guarantee catches is not impossible. How long have I been fishing for? That's a good question. Uh, I, was, I was raised doing it, to be honest. My dad was a fisherman, a commercial fisherman, for 20 years. And uh, yeah, he brought me up doing it. I was going down the beach with him when I was a toddler, picking up stuff off the beach and eating it and winkles. Yeah, caught my first bass when I was about 12, I think, with my Uncle Mick, 10 or 12, something like that. Uh, razor clams and lob lobsters are really nice. Conga is quite a lot of prep. If you cut the steaks off, you'll have to pick around the bones. But they are nice to eat. Smash fishing, hell yeah. Have you tried fishing with shrimp as bait? Yeah, I've uh, I don't know. I used to do a lot of bubble float fishing with them. That was good fun. Nice, eighteen pound conga there a week ago. Morning. Do -do 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 -do. No one likes to fish when your balls are freezing. Where's Sam? Good timing. Hello. <laughs> what you got to do? Get in the cups. Yeah. Just from like the last few bloody lives. You finished with that one? Yeah. Gone cold. Cheers, mate. Well, right, I'm going to go and pay the trailer. <laughs> that sounds. See you in a bit. Happy days. Eating a dogfish. Dogfish are really good. Um, put them in breadcrumb. Uh, put them in flour, put them in egg, then cover them in breadcrumb and uh, deep fat fry them or fry them. Uh, if they're not cooked in time, by the time they go brown, just stick them in the oven for 10 minutes. Uh, they're bloody good. Do I ever use oil attractors? Uh, I do buy bottles of oil. Sometimes I put them in the crab pots, but <laughs> that's about it. I don't use them for congas and stuff. I find congas, the fresher the bait, the better. <laughs> do, 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 do. Congrats from Portugal. Uh, I'd like to go to Portugal fishing. I've heard you get really big bass over there. Do, 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 do. Sam's butt plug. <laughs> right. That's one rod. Uh, you'll notice I don't put clips on anymore. Those Gemini quick release ones, I've had a lot of them fail from congas. They spin up and they manage to get off somehow. So what I do is I just tie straight to the rig now. That's my new landing net. That bad boy. Probably not big enough for a big eel, but you know, for the wit that we're getting at the moment, that'd be sound.
that's what those tip lights look like that's from the last trip and you could just slide them uh which way you could just slide them out like that they're perfect they are and that's what the uh the tape looks like that we were talking about if i take that off that there reflects like nothing as soon as you put your uh, light on it and you can see it from a good 50 yards away so that's a handy piece of kit to have on your rods and it, like i said if you epoxy them they last for years they just they don't deteriorate look at that back on beautiful see the state of this rod That's what you call a well-used conga rod. If you can see all the chunks taken out of it. Just took a beating, this rod. Hence the reason why I wanted the second one the same. Is a tackle don't usually last me very long. One, I'm clumsy. And number two, I don't really care about it. I tend to slam it down a lot. Especially if there's a big fish caught, I tend to throw it down and then go get the fish. Which isn't good because it costs money. Do, 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 do. Have you caught Aquaman? Do, 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 do. How are you air for to work, baby? Do, 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 do. do I ever catch bait by throwing a cast net? No. Reason being, I have no idea how to throw them. <laughs> I've got a 10 foot cast net here, brand new, in the box. It's got fine diameter netting for uh, sand eels and small mullet and that, but uh, I don't know how to throw the bloody thing. <laughs> I've had that for about four years now. But to be fair, I haven't given it a real go. But only once or twice on the ground. I know not to throw it into grass anymore because you pick up all the leaves. Do you buy a lot of stuff off Amazon? Uh, more camera gear. I've brought 17 of the same bloody tripods last year. Uh, no, sorry, 15. <laughs> uh... How long am I going to Amsterdam for? Just for a weekend. It's because it's my girlfriend's birthday. I wanted to treat treat her to a little getaway. So yeah, we're going to go to Dam for a bit. It's nice for her as well. What's that? Is there new areas you were going to... Try for lobsters, scallops and stuff. Uh, there's a lot of places I can try. But uh, Guernsey's only got a select few really good spots for foraging. Hence the reason I kind of... Uh, I keep the camera down quite a lot. Unless it's just like an open beach and I don't mind. Because a lot of the times... Uh, we go to the same lobster holes. So I don't want a lot of people knowing where they are. Otherwise, it's less content for me. <laughs> just being honest. Smoke weed and damn. No, I don't smoke weed, mate. Got no problem with anyone that does. Do you get many blue sharks? I haven't caught a blue shark, but I want to. Fishing tonight? Nope. Can I make more pots? I do plan to make more pots. I've got, I've got some galvanised steel. Uh, sort of a cross piece that I'm going to make out of. It's hard to explain, but... When I do the video, then uh, you'll see what I mean. Can't wait to start work again. I get all my tools out of here. The eyes on these wind casts are freaking strong as well. Uh, 
It was a little while back, we were fishing like a cliff where it was like on the right of us, sheer down like this, and then just a flat slope. And I went to cast and I whacked the top of my rod on the rocks and not one eye broke. And that was full pelt as well. So you can see why I got the other one. Highly recommended. And to be fair, they're quite, they've got good soft tips as well. But when you get about two foot down with the bend, you ain't gonna, you gonna pull up Shamu with them. Hardest fish to catch in my opinion. Uh, mullet, hands down, thick lip mullet or thin lips, golden greys. Uh, mullet are hard to catch, but they're fun. Do -do -do. Spash smoking. What beer do you drink when fishing? I don't. I don't drink while fishing. I used to. Uh, when I used to fish with Dan in the uh, competitions a lot, I used to take eight beers with me, but I gave up drinking. If I do, it's a very rare occasion. To do afternoon job. Is the newer rod the Daiwa? I don't know about the Paul Kerry special, but it's just the Daiwa wing cast. Rough ground, four to eight ounce. And yeah, they're bloody strong if you're talking about the same rod. Uh, I've put this one here through absolute hell. Uh, pulled on it as hard as I can. I smashed it on the rocks. Bloody congas have pulled it over the rocks, freaking all sorts, and it's still going. Same as the reel. That's why I've got two fathoms now. It's because they've, they've lasted. And you ask Sam, uh, they call me Smash for a reason. I smash everything to pieces. <laughs> Is kayak fishing something you do in Guernsey? Yeah, I, I only sold my kayak about four months ago. I did one video, I think, uh, where we went out and caught a load of rats in it. That was quite a long time ago now. Uh, yeah, that was a good day, but uh, we just couldn't find the time to get out on it, so... I sold mine, and uh, I'll buy one eventually. Uh, Sam's still got his, I think. I'm not too sure. Right, what am I doing? There we go. So yeah, that's how I pack my rods up. I just leave the line dangling so I can tie the rig on, and then just strap them up. And good thing is, most of my conga spots are only a 10 minute walk down the road. So, uh, I can carry this lot quite easily if Sam's not around. Sorted. I need a bigger shed. <laughs> well, what am I missing? Thanks for, thanks for the amazing content. No problem. Oh, nice car. Have I, I've seen octopus before, but I haven't found one foraging or anything. What do I do work as? I'm a general builder, but a carpenter by trade. Yeah, so I've got half my tools in here, half inside. I've got fish and tackle everywhere. I think that's it for this bag. That's my normal tackle box, so that never comes out with me. I even had the, uh, you can see how much conga fishing I used to do, is I wore a big hole in this. <laughs> That's just sharpening the mustard hook. Uh, 
Uh, would you consider fishing anywhere? Yeah, I, I plan to fish the UK a bit more. But uh, yeah, Guernsey's got a great variety. So we, uh, where you guys will get the cod and a lot of rays and that, we get flooded with bass. We get loads of bass, pollock, bream and stuff like that. So it depends which way you want to look at it, to be honest. Like we, we want to catch cod because we can't. You know, they only come up now and again. But if we want bass, you could just go down the road on a good day and catch one. So I'm not saying it happens like that all the time, but 90% of the time you can get you can get a small one, you know. This gorge is in there. So. Got old fishing reels everywhere. It's old shark reels. That one's my dad. My dad had that when he was my age. Same as that rod as well. The shark rod I've got up there is my old man's. That one. I use it for tope and stuff. Uh, I, I used to touch the hooks up with a file. Now if they're bent over or dull, I cut them off and put a new one on. How did you and Sam meet? He's going out with my sister. I hated him at one point. <laughs> He's alright though. Do I still have my first rod? Yes, I do. Thirty-five years old. Well, I'm twenty-eight now, and I've had this one. I must have been ten years old or or younger. That's an ugly stick, a really old ugly stick. Uh, I used to go ras fishing with this. This is how I started out. My dad took me to these little ras marks. Uh, if you've seen the lure fishing video of the big ras. That spot there, my dad showed me that when I was really young. And I've been fishing there ever since. And uh, yeah, the rod's got solitaped eyes on and I still use it to this day. That's a beast. Even all the corking, look, it's all coming out, it's all rotten. But the rod is strong as anything. So if it's not broken, don't fix it. My girlfriend was using that last bass trip as well. Cheers, SK Fishing, Florida. Should have turned my YouTube comments off. Still got your first, I've still got my first multiplier as well. Where is it? Right there. That was my first boat reel when I was really young. It's broken now, the washers are gone, but... That's a stainless steel beast, that. If you put some new washers in that, it would still work fine to this day. Hi, Neil. See a car? Uh, when will you be doing your next foraging vid? Uh, that will be in a week and a half time. Uh, the first of the abalone season, which I'm looking forward to. I'm hoping we can get some on the first tide but it's going to be tight uh i usually go if it's a 1.5 meter tide or lower so if it's not that it's really hard to find stuff how come you're not fishing on a lovely day like this it's not lovely i've been down to the coast come down to florida florida's somewhere somewhere i'd like to fish right where am i doing this I'll be back.
There's the new mullet rod. Hasn't even got line on it yet. It's a Sigma. Sigma Supra, 12 foot. It's a barbel rod. Uh, the reason I like freshwater rods also is because uh, they're soft, especially for mullet fishing. Then I got the Pen Pursuit 3 on there, 3,000, and I'll put 10 pound line on that. And I'll use that for free lining for bass, mullet fishing, all that. And what I like about it is it's got removable tips. So I've got two other replacements. One's two pound, one's three pound, one's four pound, I think. Yeah. It's going to be ideal for just flicking out the little floats and stuff. And if not, I'm going to practice with the cast net and try and get them that way. <laughs> but hey ho. I won't keep the live on for too much longer, guys. I just wanted to go through my conga. Hero Black 4. You've mentioned your GoPro Hero Black 4. No, I've got the Hero 8. Uh, before that, I was using my iPhone. Uh, every video up to only a few months ago uh, was all made on iPhones. Either the iPhone 4, iPhone 5S or the iPhone 6. And Akos cameras. Do -do -do -do. Removable tip. Start making World War Three fishing videos. Uh, wait for the summer. Be World War Three when I get in the water with my spear gun. I'm dying to get out. Uh, I'm I'm a big lover of spear fishing. I always have been. Me and Sam used to go quite a lot as well. But uh, yeah, last year we just didn't get the time to go out as much as we wanted to. I want to do uh, some sort of diving foraging as well because we find the big hard shell clams on the on the surface, and some of them are about four feet deep, just about 10 feet away from us, from the shoreline. So if we go around snorkeling, we might be able to find some. A thing to note with the abalone season as well, if you're, uh, if you're ormoran, you're not allowed to be underneath the water. So you can't use snorkel and mash, you're not allowed a wetsuit on, you're not allowed a dry suit. You, only have to, you can only get them with your bare hands, like around the rocks, you know? And you can go like waist height in water. You just can't go under the water. Disappointed with my Hero Black 4. Well, the, the 8, so I haven't had one problem with it. Uh, I'll go get it. I'll show you the damage. That's what I use, the Hero 8. I've got protective screen covers on it. If I bring you down. I don't know if you can see on the side of it here. Uh, you can see all around here, there's a load of big chunks in the side of it. Well, on the urban foraging video, I nearly KO'd my, my GoPro. <laughs> uh, I had, sand and uh, mud inside the speakers and what it is, is I flicked it down like that towards the floor and this popped out and smacked on the floor I've never been so scared to pick up my camera before uh, all of the back screen protector was completely smashed but the GoPro itself was fine it's just got a few dents so that shows you what abuse these things can take and they don't overheat I've, uh, I've fished for 12 hours straight with this constantly running, just changing the batteries, and that's never overheated. They are bloody bulletproof, these things. Do, 
Do -do 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 -do. Uh, get practicing with the cast now. I do want to start. When will the next video be done? Uh, as soon as I can get out. Uh, it usually takes me about 25 minutes to edit and then it takes about an hour for me to upload because the internet's crap. Happy birthday from Smash fans. Yeah, I'll tell her. Yeah, Sean, if you're going somewhere, take a rod. Easiest way to catch bass, lure or bait? I'd say lure. Lure fishing, you pick up the smaller ones easier. Uh, as a bait fisherman, I always use, ma like you probably tell by, by the videos, I use massive baits all the time. So usually when we get a bass, it's a big one. Yeah, so definitely lure fishing with the scaries and that. I haven't got my lure fishing stuff in here, so I can't show you. If you guys want to see it, I can go get my lure fishing box and show you which lures have been productive. Uh, I won't be going live for too much longer. You keep seeing things about World War... Three. Well, World War Two, the Germans were over here building bunkers and that. That's why you see in a lot of foraging videos, uh, we would go to them and sit on top of them and cook. Uh, I don't think we're legally allowed to cook inside them, so I don't bother. Apart from the little one, there's a little box one that we can go in. Yeah. Uh, if you're going foraging, definitely do your homework, because I can't speak for places outside of Guernsey. I can't tell you where's safe and stuff like that, so the knowledge I can only give you is like looking for lobsters and where to find the stuff. So, yeah, please do your knowledge if you're going to uh, do foraging. Afternoon from Yorkshire. Uh, Inglorious fishing the stream for two hours now, cleaning his boat. Yeah, he's a clean freak, old Inglorious. He loves it. Uh, I was watching a bit of it before when uh, they went out trying to catch the bream. About to send over a new edit. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> Uh, Trump ordered a hit on an Iranian general. I don't know. Uh, I tend not to watch the news and stuff, to be honest. I don't read the paper. I don't read news outlets. To be honest, a lot of them just talk a lot of bullshit. So I, I just don't want to read it. I'd rather just make videos, to be honest. Uh, Ashley, yeah, I'll go get them in a sec. Thanks, dude. Do -do -do -do. Afternoon from London. Any plans to go to the United States? Yes, eventually. Uh, depends how well this YouTube stuff goes, to be honest. Uh, if it keeps going at the rate it is, eventually I'll be doing it full time. Uh, my boss is, is getting on now, so when he retires is when I'm going to be looking to do something, you know? Uh, yeah, I'm just, I just won't quit until he wants to retire. I've been with him for like 12 years now. I started my apprenticeship with him and everything, so uh, yeah, I'm going to wait for him to retire and see what I'm going to do after that. I'm amazed how many different worms you find when you're foraging. Yeah, foraging, you can really find some different ones. I haven't got rock worm on the channel yet, I don't think. Verm. That, that's a serious worm. <laughs> uh, they're a bit like the uh, Australian sand worms. The big teeth on them. They're very similar to that. What big baiting rods do you use? Uh, my two conga rods. I use those for big bass fishing, for 
pass ray, uh, all sorts to be honest. Because in Guernsey, we don't need to cast far. Uh, a 50 yard cast is usually more than enough. So you don't need to cast far. So we tend to use like 30 pound main line straight through. No leaders, no shock absorbers. Not gonna take over his business now. Nah. Uh, I wanna start making YouTube my business to be honest. How are you, man? Hope you're good today. I'm all good, mate. Uh, got a lot of shoulder pain as always, but uh, yeah, it is what it is. Ain't gonna stop me. Uh, your boss might want him to carry on the business when he retires. Nah, uh, when he retires, he'll it, it, shut it down, I think, or uh, his son might might take it over. Uh, yeah, quite a lot of people have uh, gone full-time YouTube. Uh, end of the day, if it pays enough, then why not? You know what I mean? We all love doing it. I say fair, fair play to anyone that's made it that far. Yeah, Australia's really sad at the moment, mate. Bad for the animals as well. Uh, thanks, Ashley. Uh, I think what's most attractive is we're just batshit crazy. <laughs> we don't try and fake anything. We're not. We're not trying to be anything special. It's just a vlog. You know what I mean? Like I put in the uh, channel description, it's just a vlog of my fishing. That's that's all I made it as. And whatever I do on it, fishing, foraging, spear fishing, whatever. If you enjoy it, you enjoy it. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I don't. I'm not bothered. You know what I mean? I just do this for fun. Four two zero no. When's the merch coming? Uh, I have, I, I would show you, but I can't. I have merch designs on my phone, but I'm just trying to work out the process for making a website and shit. Uh, yeah, it's quite a lot in uh, doing merch and stuff, especially with like tax and all that stuff, you know? Laugh aloud, sorry. Sorry for what? You and Sam. The untouchable, most favourite duo on YouTube. <laughs> That's the thing. Uh, yeah, Sam's always loved making the videos with me. He loves holding the camera, getting in with the if, with the fishing. You know what I mean? It's good fun. It doesn't matter if it's Inglorious, Stewie, anyone. But yeah, Sam, he, he's definitely bit up his knowledge over the past couple of years as well. Very good fisherman, and he's had some bangers as well. That ray he caught was a freaking monster. Uh, real time, real life, no ball. Yeah, I ain't got time for that. I ain't got time for bitchy people. I got no time for any of it. I would just laugh at you and just keep going. Uh, you're the face and Sam's the cameraman. I hope you guys get as popular as Brave Wilderness. Well, I can't see that happening for a very long time, but I, I do love Brave Wilderness. I love, I love how big his balls are when it comes to the stings. Oh, I couldn't do that. That's madness. Right, I've got some balls on me. I don't mind getting pinched by things if my hands are in the holes and stuff, but bugger letting one of those big like wasps and that sting me. I'll be squealing like a girl. Love your positive, upbeat personality. We all have bad days, mate. <laughs> but end of the day, if you're always trying to be positive, then you're going to have most positive days, isn't you? Uh... You should make and sell foraging hooks and gauges. Nah. Uh, I love building as my job. But as for doing it outside of work and shipping them, I can't be bothered, to be honest with you. I'd rather, like, the time that I make all these hooks and stuff, I could be making videos, so. With all our support, we could help you get further with your channel. Well, it's all the fans that do it anyway. It's not me. I'm not the one that's pushing the videos. Uh, I just upload them. You know, I put them on my Facebook now and again, and that's about it. Uh, it's you guys that are sharing them, liking them, and commenting and all that. that that's what really pushes a channel. It's not the YouTube. I, like, you might like, like the videos, but it's you guys doing the work, like, advertising. 
advertising it. So, you know, my respect goes out to you guys. And I do watch my stats quite a lot. I know what top countries are watching, what videos are doing good, bloody blah, blah, you know. Would you travel and forage around the UK? Yes. Uh, shore fishing Essex. I want to go to Essex and do a collab of him. Yeah. That would be cool. Uh, I love his personality. He hasn't uploaded in a little while. I'm not sure why, but yeah, he's just cool. What's that? Two new edits. Let me know what you think. Yeah, I'll have a look at them later. <laughs> I'm sure I'm going to have a laugh. Right, I'll go get my spin gear. Another fishing rod. That's my bass rod. Probably the best bass catcher on the channel. Scary Zeal. Those are awesome lures. Yeah, and this is a, what was it? Pen Regiment 2. 20 to 50 gram, I think it is. 20 to 50 gram. 20 pound braid. Uh, 20 pound leader. Fluorocarbon. And that's the outfit I use for all my lure fishing. You don't really need much, uh, apart from rass fishing where I go Texas rigging with light gear. Uh, yeah, that's what I use for bass fishing. I mostly use uh, ear limitations. All right, what's in this fishing bag? So yeah. Yeah, so stuff like this in Guernsey uh catches bass all the time sidewinders any sort of sidewinder eel oh uh, sorry what is that is that the savage gear i can't remember what that is <laughs> that's the sidewinder eels those are the super slim whites uh these are the scary design in white those are killer as well any sort of like ear limitation lure will catch bass in guernsey That's a good question. Uh, if you could do a collaboration with a fishing channel or YouTuber, who would it be? That's a good question. I don't know. To be honest. Uh, I very much just take things in my stride. So if someone came up with something, then yeah. If it's not too too much of a pain to do, then I'll, I'll do a collab. But yeah, I don't know. To be honest, I, I'm quite happy with anyone. Do -do -do -do. Collab with Fish Locker. Yeah, he's another good channel. Uh, same as TA Fishing, Craig Evans. There's loads. But yes, whatever the time calls for, really. The same with my lure fishing. I've got one of these little tiny, I think they're fresh water boxes. And that's for all my mullet gear and spin stuff, you know. For spin fishing, all you need is some uh, leader line and a, a clip. So you don't need much. So it's nice and lightweight. Oh, I was looking for that. Selfie stick. Shore Fishing Essex is a really good channel. I really enjoy his channel. Craig Evans. I'd love to do a collab with Craig Evans. I was only saying it to Sam the other day that uh, it'd be nice to even go out on one of his little courses, you know? Because I'm not the best with seaweeds and stuff, so it'd be interesting to learn some stuff. Uh, 
Uh, no. Do you ever stack rocks or place things to create lobster holes? No, I don't. I don't like moving the environment too much. Uh, there's a lot of big cracks in the rocks and stuff around Guernsey because we live on an island. Savage gear, that eel was, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I've got no need to start moving rocks and disturbing everything. You know, I, like I always say, if you pick a rock up, put it back. I've got no need to... Uh, the only thing I would do is I used to do with peeler crab. I used to take some terracotta pipe, the old drain pipe, cut it in half, and then put little pieces dug into the sand at an angle, and the peeler crabs would go inside there and stay there to molt their shell. And you just go around picking them out, and then when the... Uh, when the season's over, you can just go around, pick up all your pottery and take it back home again. That's the only thing I do. I wouldn't go moving rocks around and stuff like that. Did you have a rowdy new year? No. Uh, I think I spent till nine o'clock with my family. Then I went to my girlfriend's and chilled with her. Uh, no drinks. Yeah, that's very true. That's what it's all about, going out, learning new things and using it, uh, using that to teach teach others. Yeah, it's true. Thing is, I'm not one of those people who try and pretend I know everything because I don't. Uh, what I show you is just stuff that I was taught with my dad, you know? <laughs> yeah, go spam shore fishing Essex. What's the biggest fish you have caught? Either either a conger or a tope. Round the fo round the forty pound forty pound mark. Hi, I'm back. Uh, I've had a lot of uh, rockwood. Uh, I've had a lot of people ask me to guide them and stuff, but I'm not interested in that because I've got to look out for your safety and stuff. So the places we go are not safe. You know, one slip on a rock, because all the rocks are like jagged, you know. If you slip and hit your neck, that's the end of you. So I don't want that lurking over me. I'd feel awful if someone got hurt coming out of me. What Sam does is up to him. He's, he's his own responsibility. Uh, do you go river fishing? No, I don't. Uh, I'm more of a saltwater angler. Uh, any more questions, guys? Then I'm going to stop the live. I think I've gone through pretty much all of it now. I might do another live if the weather's still crap. And I'll show you my camera gear and my laptop and stuff, what I use for editing. Steel or heavy mono trace? Always mono. Uh, I used to use steel quite a lot when I was younger. But I find it cuts the eels. Uh, when they start spinning up and that, if it goes around their mouth or their gills, it cuts them. So it's just, it's a little unnecessary, I think. Uh, 200 pound mono, I've never lost a conga to. Never ever lost a conga. What's been your favourite trip out so far? I don't know. Uh, I don't really care about big catches and stuff, to be honest with you. Uh, I'm more like the moment, you know, just going out of your friend and having a laugh. So, I don't know. Uh, just making videos, that's my best moment. Are you under France or British law? We have our own law. Uh, yeah, Guernsey's quite independent in that way. We've got our own laws and stuff. A lot of the laws are pretty similar to the UK, but no, we do we do live under our own laws. We got quite relaxed laws. Uh, circle or J-hooks for congas? J-hooks. Uh, I've tried circles. I've tried with wire, I've tried with mono, I've crimped them, I've tried everything and I keep losing fish, like I can feel the congas on it and you go to lift into them when they're pulling away and I just can't hook them. But with the J hooks, first try, bang, you got them. So uh, sometimes you get the gut hook deals, but that's what the disgorge is for. So I try and do as little damage to them as I can. Pier or rock marks? Depends what you're going for. Uh, Piers are always good, it doesn't matter, you know. But uh, I'd rather fish rock marks because I like to believe that no one's been there. But truth is, everyone fishes everywhere around here. Yeah.
Uh, is it true you go to jail there for driving 40 mile an hour? You might get a ticket. You're not going to go to jail. Depends what your previous is. Take it easy, Rich. Right, I'm going to bust off now, guys. Hope you enjoyed the live. Hopefully I can get out soon. I'm just doing my head and being stuck inside. <laughs> What's that? Stay up till 2 and 9 p.m. somehow. <laughs> right, take it easy. Peace.